A song called The Blacker by the artist Coutte, featuring persons like Brooklyn Decent and Freetown Collective. Now, while the song was being penned, the events inspiring it had the Prime Minister wrapping his head around the proper way to address this issue. And here we are with the Community Roadmap to Recovery team. Now, we're joined this evening by Nicola Harvey Mitchell, Akosua Dardane Edwards, Jamal Shabazz, and team lead Anthony Watkins. So we want to start with you, Mr. Watkins, while we thank you all for being part of this conversation. Now, the last time we spoke, it was before your first meeting. So we want you to share a short update on your progress since then, please, Mr. Watkins. Well, uh, since then, DK, and th thanks for having us. Uh, since then, we've had a number of, of sessions on engagement. We've been busy sort of deciding on how we should organize the committee internally. But more importantly, we have been doing a lot of research, gathering a lot of data, and stepping out into our community and engaging with stakeholders, organizations, and with communities within the, the area that we're targeting. And we want to speak about that engagement in a little more detail in just a moment. We speak now with Madame Akosua and asking, what are you doing with your story in the context of this situation? Uh, just to add to Mr. Watkins to say thank you for having us uh, share this story. Um, as part of the recovery team, I am bringing the experience of rebuilding communities throughout different parts of the world and also just the passion of being in Trinidad and contributing to reimagining how these communities will look in the future and really just supporting in any way that I can. Thank you so much. And the, the Prime Minister spoke to you being able to call many members of the community by name, Brother Shabazz. Now, do you feel a greater sense of responsibility to the cause because of your roots in the area in question? I feel a, 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 a tremendous uh, sense of responsibility, uh, particularly coming out of, 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 of the protest and, and the efforts made by the, the the people in the community to 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 keep the the peace given the problems that we've had and um now that we've started to engage the the, the community i am also proud in the way uh, the community is responding to the committee and the frank and free way in which the, the interaction is being done with, 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 with both parties. Now, with regard to that community response, that is definitely something we know to speak about in just a bit. And I'm also bringing in Ms. Nic Mrs. Harvey Mitchell here. Now, you also bring a level of validity because you have been walking the talk with your involvement in WABY. Hopefully, that's uh, pronounced correctly. We Please are better yes. youth. Now, asking no, for your yes. thoughts on correct. this situation. Thank you. Right. Just to correct us, we say yes. Organization is a youth entrepreneurship program that has been working in the East Port of Spain area, area in more than of nine communities in East Port of Spain over the last six to seven years. And we target young persons between the ages of five straight on to 16. And I think because I have been working in the various communities that we are now targeting, I've built relationships with parents, with adults, with community members, and therefore it brings some level of credibility, a level of trust to the community recovery program and our team going in. In addition to that, it allows the residents of the communities that we are now interviewing um, to feel a sense of comfort mm -hmm. and to feel a sense that you know somebody is there who have who know about their particular situation and can feel their situation because I've also lived in Laventil for more than 30 something years of my life in over the early Laventil to be exact. Now in terms of the fact that you are faces that people see mm -hmm. you walk like you said you've lived there for so so many years uh, this 
con conversation that you're having now, Brother Shabazz, you're talking about community response. What are some of the things that uh, the community has been saying with regard to the committee, the team, and ways that they can engage you all? And this is, this is me asking you, but I'll, I'd, I'd want to run that question by everyone, thanks. Well, first of all, uh, people have been afraid to go in the communities like Beverly Hills, John John, C. Lutz, the uh, and, 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 and these areas. And the fact that uh, the, the Prime Minister's committee has started to go in and go in without any 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 police or, 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 or kind of security um, definitely has, has started with a sense of trust and confidence that you know, we're going in to talk to, to our people. And therefore, the, the, the ideas coming from them, they, they have been very relaxed. And, and, and we're getting a, a, a first-time idea of what are the problems that they have been faced. I am proud of the way they have responded because these are, 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 are points that I've been making for a number of years. So when when I see when I see them able to get up and and and, and speak to members of the, the committee with with courage and with confidence, and and it removes that that label of of violence and and if there's such a word, Buddhism, and um, I am I, I am impressed. In fact, I told them in front of the committee when we were in John John uh, that I was so impressed with the way they articulated their position and the condition that I was supposed to be over on that side with them, uh, 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 not just on the committee. What are your thoughts on the, com on the community response, Ms. Edwards? I didn't catch your question. In terms of the community response, what, what would you like to say about the community response from your perspective? I would just join in with Jamal and, and say that I am actually proud of how the residents have shown up and articulated what they see that they want in their community and, and the ability to share so openly and freely gave us also a sense of trust. And we are also able to see through their lens and now we can go out and communicate to the wider public, you know, the, the success stories, the everyday living that uh, we, we don't seem to see. Uh, we are able to see a humanity that is not really projected in the media or in any other areas. And I'm really heartened by the fact that we are able to just be as free and open with the community members and we can go out now and share their stories and share how they envision their community to be in the future. Do you share those sentiments, Mrs. Harvey Mitchell? Could you repeat that question? Do you feel the same way about the community response? Yeah, yeah. for me, um, it is twofold, right? Um, I was part of the committee. I feel some of the same feelings that they have about, you know, possibly being stigmatized, not getting the opportunities, um, the kind of emotional loss that we have had because of the number of murders that we had in the community. But I also feel a real sense of hope. And everybody wants to make their community better, whether you go to Beverly Hills, John John, if you go beat them, if you go see lots, if you go Gonzalez, if you go ups and bobs, everybody generally wants the best for their community and want to see good coming out of their community and want us to tell the stories of the good from within their community. So they have been quite open with us and they have been sharing their feelings and we have been capturing it in a way that we can then together form solutions for them. And we want to talk about some of those solutions when we return, stay with us. And we are speaking with members of the Community Roadmap to Recovery team. And we got an idea or a sense 
from each of the members, of, apart from the team lead, Mr. Watkins, ab about the community response. Now, I want you to chime in on that, please, Mr. Watkins, but I also want you to carry it a little further because it's one thing speaking with members of the community versus speaking with stakeholders outside of the community. So I ask you to make that juxtaposition for me, please. Okay, certainly, DK. And what has been quite instructive is, in, in a sense, and I, I want to talk about a couple other things. One is the way how the team has been ramping up in terms of its performance and how we organize to do things. So that a couple of the people who we're talking with here now are part of that outreach into the community, some in terms of outreach into the wider society. So there has been a, a real wrapping of, of the minds and the heart around what the task is of the committee. And it has been really a joy and a privilege to have the other team members being out there and leading on a number of these things. We have been able to identify some initial items and some initial needs. We know that this is a long-term process, but part of what we want to do is to be able to capture some immediate wins. And we have been facilitating one or two connections and uh, linking the community with one or two key resources. We are not going to deliver, but part of our role is to find ways to help the community to get what it what it needs to get. The other side of it, though, sort of external to the, the communities, is touching base with a couple of our tertiary level institutions, uh, corporate bodies, and working with them in terms of what they plan to do in terms of coming into the communities and how they can help. The possibilities are endless in some very novel kinds of ways from our tertiary level institutions, and of course the corporate bodies looking to, in a lot of ways, to find a mechanism to be able to substantially and in a real sustainable way help and support the community. A couple of the organizations we work with are also organizations that currently do work in the community. They deliver programs and we have been hearing from them what they have been doing and their sense of what they've been doing. But we've also listened to the community talk about those organizations mm -hmm. and we're seeing some alignment, we're seeing some areas where there can be some improvement. And that too is going to be part of our role in terms of helping to, to minimize that kind of disconnect, kinds of programs that are being done, who they're being offered to, where and when, and be able to line up and to link our providers with the real needs of the community. So we're well on the way. I mean, there's a lot. The scope and scale is significant. It's major. But I must say, in terms of the pieces that we have done so far, a real, some real progress has been made. I'm grateful that you speak about three points in particular. One, immediate items, while cognizant of the fact that it will be a long-term process, as well as engaging people on the ground. And that is one of the things I want to speak to now. And I'll ask you, please, Nicola, um, what kind of thought is being put into saying, okay, well, people are on the ground, so let us engage these people. And I'll, I'll carry that question around, because sometimes people want to say, okay, well, we know what is best, so let's bring this. And then when it's not used, you see, you see how the people are ungrateful? Mm -hmm. So um, in terms of engaging stakeholders who are already on the ground and mobilizing and doing good in the community, what's your take on that? All right, so that's one of the things from a stakeholder's perspective we had identified. We looked at the residents that we need to contact. We looked at some of the NGOs, some of the other organizations that are on the ground and working and doing good work. And we've also looked at uh, um, other organizations who are either supporting the community one way or the other. And from our initial engagement, we have at least had interviews with some of the, maybe about four of them, four of those organizations that are already on the ground and doing great work. And therefore, those are the ones we want to continue to strengthen, to continue to point out any gaps that they can improve on. And um, yeah, just continue working with them. Because as, as Mr. Watkins will say, we are not the actual persons delivering but we want to strengthen some of those organizations that are doing great work down there. Yeah, down on the ground, as you would see. And any of my colleagues could jump in. So I'll ask for your two colleagues to jump in, in terms of <laughs> Mr. Shabazz and Ms. Edwards. I just want to give a, a perspective on on the ground where we are looking at the everyday lives of people who, who are shining, who are exemplars in the community but feel overpowered by what is being said outside. So we are speaking to those people to share their stories and show that they are also on the ground in their own way because they have 
over, overcome so many of the obstacles and have a vision of how they want to see their community and they're living that through their everyday lives. So we want to say to them, you are also on the ground doing excellent work and we want to, to honor and show that as part of the recovery so that other people within the community and even those with outside of the community can see that there are people on the ground who are living and reimagining how this community could look like. And the point of that humility going into this situation is something that I think is, I really appreciate it. Actually, we'll play a video now. Uh, there's a quote uh, that I want to share. And it kind, to me, it kind of exemplifies some of what is happening at this point in time. And that is when you debate a person about something that affects you more than it affects them, or it affects them more than it affects you, remember that it will take a much greater emotional toll on them than on you. For you, it may feel like an academic exercise. For them, it feels like revealing their pain only to have you dismiss their experience and sometimes their humanity. And the fact that you may remain calm under these circumstances is a consequence of your privilege, not increased objectivity on your part. Stay humble. And with that, I bring you in, Brother Shabazz. Uh, in terms of saying, okay, well, there are people. There are people working. There are people doing things, but we might not know about them, or they might not get as much shine. What are some of the things that you all are doing to say, okay, well, you're, you're already doing it. So we just want to kind of facilitate and lend a strength to that. Well, there's this, there's this mood by me and the committee that sometimes the rest of the committee gets fed up. Um, because I am so, so focused and driven on, 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 on what happens now. Um, I have to be constantly reminded that we are not a, a, a group to actually make the deliverables. But in, 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 in following up what you said, there's this saying that people like to go around with that uh, teach, give a man a fish and you feed him, but they teach a man to fish, you feed him, or whatever. That does not apply to us in the community. We've gone past that adage. This, we need some fish now. We need some fish now because we will eat the bait and poison ourselves of hunger. And we, do, we, we, we not, not only need fish, we need the industry to be set up to teach us how to fish, the transport, the export industry. We need all the factors to be set up and then if our people in these communities, John John, Beatum, Mango Road, Caledonia, you know, in Diego Martin, Bagatelle, when, when we fail after that is being set up, then you can say these people ain't good at all. But right now, we last in the race. And it's not good enough to just tell us run harder and, 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 and work harder. All right, thank you so much. People say, while the grass growing, the horse starving. But last 30 seconds, Mr. Watkins, I leave with you uh, just to kind of a charge. Where sometimes personality is able to deal with a situation, but personalities fade away. But what is the process going to be in place past this term, past the team's life, past this administration? Any thought to that? Well, yeah, well, well, certainly, I mean, in terms of the immediate, there are some things that have to be done you know, in, in the immediate, and we're going to be making efforts to do those things in the, in the short term. But you're right, and, and, and Shabazz is right, in terms of where, what are some of the spaces and the infrastructure and systemic things? How do we set up an ecosystem that supports business generation and employment generation for people in our communities? Now, when we do that, of course, it is the matter of presenting those to the wider community, to the nation, and using them as examples of how things can be expanded. And hopefully out of that is where we're going to get the, the long-term sustainability that will certainly outlive Anthony Watkins. And I'm not sure about the younger people on the team, but they will certainly out outlive me. But we're looking forward to something that, in a sense, takes on a life of its own and really allows people, as they have expressed, to claim their space, to claim their future, and to, and to do the things that they want to do and to do it with dignity. We have been treating our communities with respect. We've gone in there very respectfully with them. And uh, we have got that respect in return. And I have and to say that respectfully, we that are have. out of time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but you, respectfully, we are out of time. But we thank you so much for your in, in involvement. 
and uh, sharing with us some of the work that has been going on and we continue to follow this and on behalf of the entire news team we thank you for joining us have a good night <laughs>